Hi guys, welcome back to the tutorial. Uh, in the last video we had just created a new GUI um, that asked the player for their name and we had just created the function that will um, happen when the player clicks on the OK button. Uh, I want to go back to the GUI real quick um, by double clicking the GUI here. I want to select, select GUI from the drop down box here. Let me change the name because it's called GGUI1 which is kind of an ugly name. So let me go to the name property and change that to G name again G standing for GUI and then name. Also I want to address the visibility option here. This basically tells AGS when to display the GUI um, or how to display the GUI. Um, by default it's set to normal initially on which means that um, when the game, right when the game starts the GUI will be visible on the screen and I'll show you what that looks like. We haven't run the game yet so let me just go ahead and run the game just like it is. So the game has just started and there we see the GUI up in the top left corner and it's just there as ugly as can be. Uh, and Now you notice that I can type into the text box but when I click the OK button nothing happens. The GUI doesn't go away, um, you know, it just stands there. So we want to address that. We'd also like to put the GUI in the middle of the screen instead of being stuck up there in the corner. So let's address both of those options. Um, we don't want it to be displayed initially when the game starts. So we look through here. Um, when the mouse moves to the top of the screen, we want to display? No, that's kind of like the icon bar. Pause the game when shown? No, we don't care about that. Is it always shown? No, we don't, definitely don't want it always to be shown. So normal initially off. This is what we want. We want it to be um, initially when the game starts, we want the GUI to be off. And we want to have to call the GUI and tell the GUI to appear in script. So that's, that's what we want to do. Um, the next thing that I want to do is, is um, adjust the where the GUI is displayed on the screen. Um, let's just say I've already played with these numbers or figured out what the right value is. Let's say 85 and 63. Based on the width and height that I have and based on the resolution of the, the screen, I, I know that 85 and 63 for the left and top. We'll put the GUI right in the middle of the screen, which is where we want it to be. Okay, so we've addressed that. Now let's think about what we want to do here. We want to have the player's name selected or set. Um, and we want that name then to be accessible once the player sets it. We want it to be accessible anywhere throughout the whole game. Well, that seems like a perfect um, opportunity to put in a global variable. So let's go back to our global variables. We have the three that we set in our um, GUI in the uh, several videos ago. Let's add a new one. Right click, add new variable. Let's call it player name, player name. It's going to be a string. And the default value, well, what's the default player's name? It's Sammy, right? So we'll say the default uh, value is Sammy. Player name, string, Sammy. Now we can just set this value to whatever we want whenever the user types, types in something into the, GUI, into the text box. Let's go back to our GUI now. Go back to the OK button. Go back to the event. And, go back to, and, and click on the ellipsis for that function that we created before. And now let's put all of our um, magic to work here. Now we created a, a variable called player name. Now we want to assign player name when the player clicks on the OK button. Remember the player's just clicked on the OK button if, if we're getting if this function is getting called. So we want to set player name equal to our text box. Remember we called it TB name. That was the text box we put in our GUI. Now the text box has a property called text. So we can say TB name dot text. That will just return the text that the player typed in. And now we've set it to the player's uh, name. Now, by the time we get here, obviously the GUI is visible. So, we, you know, at some earlier point in the game, we've probably set the GUI to be visible. So now that the player's clicked on the OK button, we want to turn this GUI off. We want to turn our name GUI off. So let's just say gname dot visible equals false. That turns the GUI off so the player can't see or interact with it anymore. Now that we've turned it off, we really haven't turned it on yet. So let's go back to our um, Let's go back to our main hall room, go back into the room script, and let's set up a, a way to turn, the, um, to turn it on, to turn that GUI on. Well, here's, here's a good idea. When the room loads, um, or how about room after fade in? After the room is faded in, let's have Sammy, if um, player name is... Sammy. I'll tell you what, let's set the default value to be nothing. Um, if player name is nothing, let's go back to our global variable. Instead of setting it to, to Sammy, 
let's set the default value to just a blank string. That way we'll know if the if the player name is a blank string, the player hasn't set the um, they haven't set the name yet. So when the room fades in, we'll say if the player name is, is blank, in other words, the player hasn't set his name yet or her name yet, let's uh, call the GUI gname.visible equals true. Okay, let's see if that works. Now there's one more thing that I want to do. I want to make sure that when the player clicks the OK button, they're not setting a blank name. So let's go back and let's say when the player clicks on the OK button, let's say if tb name dot text so if the text that they typed in is nothing then let's display a dialog box to the user display you must type a name okay and then let's say um, let's just return from the function we don't really want to do anything else we return basically as a keyword that says get me out of this function take me away now notice we're not we're not setting the GUI the the GUI to to false so we're not setting the visibility of the GUI so the GUI will stay on the screen and they'll just get this display message that says you must type a name. So let's see how that works. Let's run the game. Okay, so we haven't set a name yet. So now our our GUI basically popped up immediately. Let's type in nothing and let's see how that works. Click OK. Okay, there's our message. You must type a name. Let's type in Sammy as our name and click OK. OK, and then the GUI went away. Now, we're assuming that our player name got set, but there's one way to find out. As soon as we click um, OK, let's have, um, let's have Sammy, after we've, after we've set the, the GUI to visible, let's have Sammy say, hello player. Now what we want to do is we want to say hello player name. But we can't do it like that because then Sammy will literally say hello player name. We want to say we want Sammy to say hello followed by whatever is in the string player name followed by an exclamation point. How do we do that? Well what we can do is we can say Sammy uh, say hello and then we can say percent %s. Now this percent %s says put a string variable here. In place of this percent %s, we're going to put a string variable. Well, how does it know what string variable to use? Well, we have never put a put a um, argument after the string, but we're going to do that in this one. We're going to say comma space and then we're going to say what what variable do you want to put there where the percent %s is? In this case, we want to say player name. That's the variable that we want to display. So it will say hello, comma space and then the player's name, which is player name and then an exclamation point. So let's see how that works. Okay, please type your name. My name is Densming. And we'll click OK. And Sammy says, hello Densming. So there we can see we've basically caused um, the, the global variable to get set now. Anywhere else, else throughout the game, um, if we want to be able to use that global variable, we just refer to the name player name. Notice too, that if we leave this screen and come back I'll just go back up to the party hall and come back down now the the room has faded in but notice that our um, our GUI didn't get displayed our GUI didn't come up to ask us what our what our name is again and that's good because now the game knows that we've already set the, the players name so we don't need to display that GUI again so that's exactly what we wanted. So in this video, we really just talked about how to um, how to create the GUI. Well, this video and the last video, how to create the GUI, and then how to um, to get information from the player and how to store that away into a global variable if if desired um, that we can use throughout the rest of the game. So I hope this helped. Um, I had a couple of questions on this um, GUI building process. Um, in the next, we're not done with with GUIs. In the next couple of videos, we'll be talking about more things you can do with GUIs and how you can customize customize them and things like that so um stay tuned guys hope you're enjoying the videos and um thanks for watching bye